My name is Josh Patel, editor at Trade Finance Global, and here we are today at XCred International in London. I'm joined by Paul Heaney, acting secretary general at the Ban Union. Paul, thanks for joining us on Trade Finance Talks TV. Thank you very much, Dipesh. So, quick introduction in 30 seconds or so. Who are you? Where are you from? And um, what do you do at the Ban Union? So, as you said, my name is Paul Heaney. I'm recently appointed as the Acting Secretary General of the BU. So that means I'm overseeing all of the day-to-day -day operations of the association. For anyone who doesn't know, the, the BU is the uh, Industry Association for Export Credit and Investment Insurance. We have a global membership, 83 members, ECAs, multilateral institutions, and also the private credit, credit and political risk insurance market. Until recently, uh, for the past six years, I've been the head of communications at the BU, um, leading our strategic comms, our outreach publications and research functions. Great. And a really strong message from the Burn Union presentation this morning, particularly around providing practical action on climate. Can you elaborate a bit more about, about the message on this presentation? Yeah, I think you know it, it, it's obvious when you come to an event like this that uh, climate is top of everyone's agenda. It's uh, something that everyone's talking about and I think across our industry it's also an, becoming an important part of uh, the strategy of uh, all Burn Union members and other institutions across the, the kind of wider trade finance and export credit insurance industry. What's uh, less uh, even is uh, the, the degree to which climate considerations have been implemented practically in, in the business of, of these institutions and you know there's there's a lot of reasons for that um, countries are coming from different starting points in terms of their position on climate and their uh, kind of industrial base the role of the Burn Union of course in general is uh, to facilitate uh, dialogue information transfer and to try to highlight best practice across these kind of things so there's two areas specifically on climate that I think we can have a real practical impact um, the first is uh, we launched a climate working group at the start of this year and uh, this brings together a multidisciplinary group of experts in um, climate and sustainability, risk underwriting, policy and international relations across Burn Union members and also uh, from other parts of the industry mm -hmm. including uh, the commercial banking sector, development finance institutions as well. And the purpose with this group is to try to really um, distill some of the expertise and some of the positive actions that these institutions are taking highlight those and try to move the whole industry forward with um, positive examples that they can learn from, that they can implement, and inspirations. So we're working over the remainder of this year and, and probably ongoing through next as well. Um, we're creating a series of educational materials, so we're looking to uh, highlight in a series of webinars um, examples of innovation in, in products, uh, in climate incentives, and uh, in innovative uh, transaction structures uh, that are targeting climate. We're also creating a series of explainer videos to uh, help demonstrate how some Burn Union members are approaching things like implementing TCFD reporting, conducting um, carbon portfolio accounting exercises, or applying scientific targets to, uh, to some of their business. So this is all information that we want to make publicly available and we want to try and highlight the, the uh, kind of positive impact that export credit can make through some of these changes within the institutions. The other area, very briefly, that I wanted to mention is of course the, the Burn Union is uh, it's the only multilateral forum for the export credit insurance industry and you know there's a wide recognition that as well as changes within individual institutions we need some kind of changes within the underlying framework of the industry um, in order to enable export credit agencies and the rest of the industry to, to meet the climate objectives of their governments. This means that we, we really need to look at reform of the OECD, but we also need a wider dialogue because this is a global issue and uh, it requires cooperation also with non-OECD members. And I think although the Burn Union is not a standard setting body, the role that we can play is uh, in helping facilitate that universal and, and broader dialogue that can maybe feed into more progress on discussions within the, the, the forum where these kind of rules are adjusted and set.
Thanks, Paul. So education, working groups and, and setting those frameworks are incredibly important for the climate change agenda and, and kind of bringing everyone together in that forum. Okay. Let, let's talk about um, medium and long term businesses, because another point from the presentation this morning was that there has been a bit of a rebound from the lows of, of the pandemic. You also referenced uh, quite an uneven recovery in terms of the markets attracting investment and, and also developing markets really continuing to struggle. Uh, re relative to the developed markets. How can the Export Credit Insurance Agency influence and, and help this? Yeah, so I think, you know, from a BU point of view, again, this is another area where it's all about forging partnerships and, and cooperation. The export credit insurance industry is, is demand driven, so the degree to which our members can directly affect the, uh, the distribution of financial flows is, is limited. Um, but at the same time, you know, we've seen uh, over recent years ECAs in particular becoming more proactive about their um, origination strategies and especially since the pandemic, you know, we see lots of ECAs with broadened mandates and clearly governments are embracing export credit agencies as part of their toolkit to um, help promote COVID recovery uh, and of course climate is another big one and I think for many developed countries um, promoting uh, exports of uh, clean tech and other kind of industries that can support positive climate action again is, uh, is a, an area that they see as, as a big opportunity for growth to help combat some of the negative effects of the pandemic uh, and difficult economic environment as well. So you know we're all aware of the the huge tension between access to energy in, in some parts of the world these objectives towards decarbonization and you know I think this is this is an area where uh, developed countries have a huge role to play in terms of uh, sustainable investment and, and securing flows of that as well as uh, transfer of knowledge uh, technology transfer as well yeah. and ECAs are uh, very well positioned to contribute to that but at the same time you know when you look at the uh, the financing needs uh, for infrastructure for energy investment yeah. across Africa yeah. um, uh, this is, requires a, a much more of a, a global kind of approach this is where I see uh, the need for partnership and engagement with all stakeholders so it's yeah. not just export credit agencies or uh, private insurers but also partnering with DFIs, um, national development banks and all the stakeholders across some of these markets. Paul, thank yeah. you very much for joining us on Trade Finance Talks. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you very uh, much. Have a pleasure good rest of the day at Xcred International. Thank you.